Hey everybody, this is Brad Dyke saying hi, how you doing? So I'm getting votes on the Proxmox Mini PC cluster model for option three. Seems to be taking the lead. Everybody would like to see what it would look like if you just kind of gutted it all out, put the boards out there and ran with it. Would it work? And the answer to that is yes, it would. So with that being said, I had an opportunity to do something really cool. So one of my customers that I have, I do it for free with them, is uh, I help their point of sale system called POS. And they have an office full of about six systems. They need to get themselves into a smaller footprint, blah, 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 blah. So I said, go with the 7040, right? The 7040 is a great little mini PC platform, right? But the cool thing is, and hey, take a look at this, because I got six additional units, I have here five and six for 11 units right here. Now, this is what it would look like if you had nothing but the chassis locks themselves. Uh, this is pretty neat. They're all exactly the same model configuration. These are eight gigs. These are 16 gigs. Uh, but they're all basically the i5s. And you know, there's a lot of firepower here. And the V Pro series, which allows you to you know, have the extended functionalities when you want to get into more virtualized based like technology platforming. Uh, Proxmox is you know pretty successful with this so far. But I thought before I started doing option one or option three, uh, I thought I would show to you what it looks like with a full load. And as you can see over on the side, it's tight, very tight. And on the back, highly organized and fairly easy to work with. As you look here, and it is really just slick, in my opinion. I think it's something which can be done. Now, something else that came up to a discussion, quite a bit actually, was why don't you do a 3D printing? Why don't you uh, design uh, some things? And I said, basically, in a nutshell, it's a great idea, but I don't have a 3D printer. I've been thinking about it, seriously, I have, uh, to make replacement parts for my appliances and things like that. But uh, in the old days, we did it the other way. We ordered parts, and we cut and snipped and set parts and pieces. And let me show you what I mean. So for option three, as you guys would like me to do, this little U-shaped style um, plastic edging would handle the circuit board placement. Of course, I'd have to ceramically glue those into the, the shelving here and uh, have them placed here. But I could get roughly about 14 of these units in because of this gap right here would go away. This is about the thickness of a wafer board. And so when you do the math on that, you're actually getting quite a bit back. But you also have to do separation. So I don't think I'll do option three with an in close up kind of fit. I'm gonna actually give a little bit of breathing space, about half of this. So I could technically do about 12 blades here in the option three version where I can only do 11 here freestanding cases. Uh, so what my plan is I'm going to go ahead and do option four to make sure everything is working correctly and that my NFS and local resources TrueNAS platform is fully operational and supporting the Proxmox cluster. That will give me a control sample. Then I'll take the five out of their boards rebuild the mount, set the wafer board up, do the gluing and all that good stuff, get that set, and then again, run the same test sets and be able to get it up and running. And then of course, I would be mounting it up there above those uh, SATA eSATA style capacity drives. So, with that being the case, I thought you guys would get a real big kick out of seeing what this 11 node cluster looks like and at the cost of maybe running two PCs in power and consumption and space. Not even two PCs, in my opinion. This is basically smaller than a, full, than a, than a mid-size slash full-size tower. Uh, so the footprint's pretty tight. I, I like it. I think it's pretty cool. After I do option three, I might revert it back into these cases, housings, because I have so much space, obviously, and I don't have any more nodes, and I'm, I don't have a lot of money. And these six nodes belong to somebody else, but it was just really nice to be able to put them out to let you guys see them and get a kick at it. So with that being said, um, 
I'll go ahead and do the option one, make sure the test compliance is good. Then deassemble it all and do option three using my wonderful plastic sleeve mounts. And then I'll probably return it back to option one as its final model just to make sure that I can not have to worry about it too much and there's some basic protection. Um, with that being said, uh, you know, double zero, uh, double one brought up a couple of things to my attention. He gave me like six more options and they're all really cool. Uh, but money has a, a big detail about doing oil cooling, you know, like mineral oil and stuff like that. You'd have to build yourself an aquarium style containment system and all of that. I don't have those resources right now. Great ideas. The only bad thing about water and, and uh, mineral oil cooling, and I think even Linus had brought this up himself at one time, is that um, given the nature of convection, heat flow, does it really work so great? Mineral oil is awesome. It really does work pretty well, I got to admit. But at the same point in time, it's incredibly messy. You, you really can't pull that hardware out of there and do anything with it. It's got to go right back into another vat, and and that's just it. I mean, once it goes into a container, it stays in a container. So, with that being said, uh, we'll stick with the primary one, two, three options. Number two is out of the picture, pretty much. Only got feedback from one person on that, uh, but you know, option one and option three will be what we're going to do going forward. Now, on the saga of the D, of the 720DX platform, um, I got a new motherboard being ordered next week, and that video will be coming up, and once again, I'll do the walkthroughs, but this time only on the rate configuration side to get it to a successful configuration state. And then that will bring up my two bad boys, in other words, my two primary sources of data backup, and that will give me all the flexibility I need to make sure that I have redundancy. Uh, that's the reason why I'm bringing the two DXs online is because they're both sizable. They both have DAS on connections and they both have a lot of disk drives on them. And uh, But for now, I need to get that motherboard fixed. So I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this. Just a short little video just for you guys to enjoy. Um, the real work comes up next. Take care. God bless.